So for those of our students who are joining us, um, I just put up a transfer um, timeline just for the spring semester. If you're just now starting out uh, in the spring semester of school, um, kind of a little helpful checklist for you to um, make sure that you're applying for scholarships. Our scholarships just opened here at the College Fund too, and make sure you're looking for all of those routes of um, where you can get um, that financial piece of it. Make sure you're meeting with your advisor to discuss your transfer options too as well. And just research application deadlines for transfer schools um, that you're looking at. Mark them in your calendar, apply for summer internships um, and whatever you and your advisor can come up with. Um, Go ahead, Caroline, Carolina, is that how you pronounce your name? Carolina, just like the states. Awesome, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you for inviting me. So when we start, I'll just um, have everyone do a quick introduction of, um, of themselves and then we'll get started on the panel questions. Awesome, we have Aaron joining us as well. Okay, it looks like we have everybody online. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, turn on my video now too. Hi everyone, Hi everyone. thank you for uh, joining us today for the transfer webinar. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we'll do some introductions and then we'll get started on the transfer uh, panel questions. And also for students who are listening, um, who are joining us, or you know, even if you're not a student, I think there's representatives here too from colleges, um, please feel free to put those in the chat box. Um, and we will try to get to as much questions as we can um, but if you come up with another question that um, you would like answered, we do have representatives here from Tribal College. Uh, we have a Tribal College student and mainstream university representative. And then also um, we have a student who has graduated from mainstream after she transferred as well. So once again, good afternoon. My name is Nicolette Weston. I am the transfer and admissions coach here at the college funds um, with the Native Pathways program. And I will turn it over to Erin, um, who um, can introduce herself next, and then we'll go around. I'll call, call on you to introduce yourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Nicolette. Hi, everyone. My name is Erin Redshirt. I am an enrolled member of the Rosebud Sioux Tribe, and I am Ogallala Lakota on my dad's side. Uh, I was born and raised in Denver, Colorado, so that's currently where I'm located, um, and I have been working at the College Fund for about a couple months now. I'm fairly new, um, but I will be on the panel, so I'm excited to talk to you guys more about my transfer experience. Thank you, Erin. Uh, Carolina, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Sure, thank you. Um, so my name is Carolina Pettis. Um, I'm the Assistant Director for Transfer Recruitment at North Dakota State University, and I am very excited to be here with you today. I was also a transfer student, so I have an extreme passion for transfer students and making sure that um, you have the best transition as possible. Awesome, thank you, Carolina, for joining us. Uh, Stephanie and Shanice, do you guys wanna go ahead and introduce yourselves? I'm gonna go first. <laughs> Hi, my name is Stephanie Bear. I am the business instructor at the Turtle Mountain Community College. Um, we try to help our students transfer uh, we are so we we offer our associates degrees. So uh, we have a few four year, but mostly we're in CTE. So our job is to hopefully get our students 
in employment or to transfer to a university or a four year. Hi, I'm Shanice Green. I am currently about to finish up my second two year at TMCC and I am going into my business degree. Um, yeah, and I'm really looking forward to speaking with you guys and telling you about my past and how I was able, because I actually already did transfer from St. Paul Community Tech to Turnamon Community College. So I'm excited to tell you guys about that process. Awesome, thank you both for joining us. Uh, Deanna James from Boho Tech. Uh, do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself? Good morning, everybody. My name is Deanna James. Uh, I'm the NSSC tutoring coordinator uh, here at Navajo Technical University, as well as doing uh, recruitment in the um, in the background. I am a business student here, and I'll be graduating in May with my bachelor's of business administration. So I'm just happy to be here and to give you a little bit of um, information and insight on how Navajo Tech does their transfer. Thank you. Thank you, Deanna, and thank you all for uh, joining us again. And I hope we can um, offer some really good advice to a lot of our students who are joining us. Um, we will start off, I wanna start off with uh, Shanice. And uh, Shanice is actually um, part of our transfer program here too with the College Fund and um, one of our scholars as well. So Shanice, um, I know we have talked about a couple of things um, beforehand that you wanted to share with a lot of the students and you know, find it very helpful for them to those who are looking to transfer. Um, so just a couple of questions, um, I guess I'll start off with asking you is, um, when you did do the transfer process, I heard you say you transferred from um, Same from, community. Yeah. yeah, back to your tribal college. Do you want to go ahead and kind of um, share, with, share with everybody that experience? Yeah, definitely. So whenever I was 18, I moved from Bellacourt, North Dakota here to St. Paul, Minnesota. And, you know, I thought it would be great experiences for me. I'd meet new people. I'd get really good education. Um, well, it wasn't really the case for me because it was it was a really big school. Um, I didn't really get to meet that many people just because there are so many people you don't really know where to start. And um, they did actually raise my tuition, which was a big thing because I was um, getting some scholarships. So I was able to have a little bit of money and work part time and make it by. So after they kind of unexpectedly raised the tuition on me, I started looking into coming back home. So right away, I got a hold of Angel Gladue. And at that point, I had one semester done in St. Paul Tech. So she, she, I sent her all my credits that I had so far. And it was literally took five minutes for her to um, let me know what was going to transfer. And pretty much every, actually every single one of my credits transferred. And I was able to graduate with my two year from every class that I took from St. Paul. So that was great. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So um, that was really good that your transfer, your credits were able to transfer. I think that's one of the big things um, that students always have a challenge with is, you know, getting all those credits accounted for. Um, as far as financial resources, um, as a transfer student, when you first went off to college off of the reservation, how was that experience financially? It was actually really hard because um, before I went to TMCC, I went and um, at St. Paul Tech, they didn't really care if the students, um, you know, were getting their tuition money or, you know, they didn't really care too much about recruiting just because there were so many people. So I guess it was just, it was a no brainer for me. Um, I lost my train of thought there because I had a lot on my mind, but uh, yeah. Uh, like that was she asked me. Well, she's talking about money. So oh, okay, how, yeah. How they help you here? Okay, yeah. So Corey Lynn Henry, um, she is our uh, scholarship advisor. She sends us emails like almost every single week. You know of what scholarships we can fill out, and um, they'll help us 
you know, even there's even help here that there's people that will help you and tutor you to actually help you write the essays for your scholarships. You know, the, the ladies in the office are completely on top of sending out your transcripts and most of the time they don't either you're not charged for it where like other times, you know, you have to pay so much to at other colleges just to get your transcripts released. So that does get pricey and that is a big thing that TMCC helps with is to re relieve that financial burden. So it is nice to have access to that. And also the work study programs here are great and uh, the internship opportunities. I actually already have a, a job lined up after my internship when I graduate this May if I want it. So um, I definitely feel like I, I got more opportunity coming back home. It was like the opposite of what I was thinking in my head for me anyways. So it worked out better for me. In my awesome. Opinion. Well, thank you for sharing that, Shanice. Um, it sounds like what you were saying is you you feel more supported um, finan financially um, in those areas with your tribal college. So you transferred back to the tribal college, correct? Yes. And then how I found out I was eligible for, my, for financial aid, I went ahead and signed up for uh, my FAFSA right away. And that pretty much determines everything. You got your butt, the... Um, the ladies at the office are so quick, they'll have your budget out in like five seconds for you. Thank you for sharing that, Shanice. What, um, my last question would be, what's some advice you would give some of our students who are looking to transfer off the reservation? Um, what type of preparations um, did you make with family, with your community, kind of to help guide you when you were um, going to school off of the reservation? Off away from home? Okay, so the first thing I, I did was um, I signed up for housing right away. Um, I was able to get in as soon as possible because there was um, openings for apartments. Usually there's always openings for apartments here. And they actually did build a really big, nice building just for the students, like not even half a mile from the school. So that's also an option. And then, um, of course, I got a, in touch with our scholarship tech and um, I had her send me all the scholarships and they even have like um, a whole stack in our office, in our front office of all the different scholarships. Um, and of course, American Indian College Fund is the first one there. And yeah, that's what I did to prepare myself. And it was really simple and actually made my life a whole lot easier. I didn't have to worry so much about, you know, my $800 rent and on top of going to school and working so much. That's very useful information, Shanice. Thank you for sharing that um, with the students as well. And I don't see any, any questions at all that you guys might have, put them in the chat box and we'll try to get to those um, questions as well. And um, the, for the other question, uh, how does COVID affect the transfer process? I would say that it's not really affecting it at all. Um, if anything, it might make it easier if you're you know, a state away or so far away, you could just get everything emailed and faxed in and they'll take care of everything for you. Really easy. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Shanice. Yeah. Um, then I guess my next questions will be for Deanna and Stephanie. Uh, we'll move on to the tribal college side of uh, transfer and see how that plays out um, when they're preparing uh, with students and you know how that process works out. If you are a tribal college student looking to transfer, if uh, you happen to have a question, put it in the chat box. We'll try to get, get that answered. Okay, so um, this question will be Stephanie and Deanna, uh, if you both want to answer it or if you want to take turns. Um, what are some of the resources on campus um, there at your TCUs for transfer students? Um, for, for TMCC, we have a placement center. Um, our placement coordinator would be Mike Vondell, and he actually takes students um, to tour the campuses that they want or even just thinking about transferring to. Um, so on that one day, he makes arrangements with whatever department that each student has to attend and get paperwork, have um, 
fill out their paperwork and they do that there. And if it's just an option, then they are able to have it emailed to them or mailed to them any information that they gather or need. So that's what we have here. Thank you, Stephanie, for sharing that. Deanna, do you want to share with yeah. us what NTU has? Sure. Um, at Navajo Technical University, we pride ourselves on an extensive support network to design to design to help each and every one of our students achieve their career goals. Our team is ready to assist you with the admission process, financial aid process, and advisement. So the resources, we really work, try to work one-on-one -on -one with the advisors. We, uh, we have uh, the first year experience advisor, Sharetta Martinez-Brown. She's in attendance. We also have Kyle Arbiso, and then we also have Trudy Granson. And then work closely with our register, Kelly Chiquito, to keep on the degree checklist to make sure everything is um, in support of the student transferring out. So we really try to let them have that one-on-one -on -one with the advisors, especially, so that way they get the best advice possible. Awesome, thank you, Deanna, for sharing that uh, with us. Also, moving on to the next question. Um, how about the financial resources for transfer students um, on the tribal college side? Um, are there any resources that you offer on the tribal college side of it when preparing them to transfer? Um, well, it, de it depends on what program they're in. Some of our programs will actually um, offer students maybe a down payment on an apartment for wherever they're going, um, some stipends, maybe um, clothes, like we have um, Park, is that what that was? We have a health program and that program would offer anything, literally anything that they needed to transfer. Um, they even offer like $500, yeah, like you said, if they want to they offer yes. halls and everything. So they, they help with everything. If the student, when the student's ready to transfer, they'll help with everything. Um, as for anything else, we have Cody Ikoto. She will help make sure that they're, they know what they're doing with their FAFSA and make sure that they let the tribal um, scholarship programs know that they're transferring and what they might have to do for that. So that's what we, those are the resources that I know that we have here. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Deanna, do you wanna go ahead and um, share with us what NTU offers? NTU mainly offers just keeping one-on-one -on -one with our financial aid offices. Um, our director, Gary Segay, we also have Rena Tom who actually works, they both work really well with the students and keeping them on track and um, having them contact the other yeah. tribal college yeah. that they want to transfer out to, whether it be tribal or whether it be non-tribal, just to make sure that they have their resources, good enough resources and scholarships and making sure that the scholarship is transferable to the youth, whatever college they're uh, wanting to pursue. But we really try to uh, make them understand that whatever um, tribal or non-tribal college they're going to, that they're financially stable, that they're able to have the, re, the, the scholarships and everything put in place first, then to not only think about it financially, but emotionally and, you know, physically to make sure that the, they're mentally prepared for the next level. Definitely, Deanna. Thank you for pointing that out. That is very important for our students to um, help them with transferring. Um, I do believe talking with Shanice um, earlier too, she did mention culture shock. Um, that's something that um, as students, when we are living, you know, on the reservation close to home with our communities, with our families, it is a huge change when we move away and go on to um, a different college, a different environment. So thank you so yeah. much for pointing that out. <laughs> and the other thing I forgot to mention was um, uh, NTU 
offers two um, in-house scholarships. It is in the chat, the Tom Davis and the PNM. We also assist students with scholarship resources, especially with American Indian College Fund. We really push them for American Indian College Fund. Um, we help them do research with any possible programs and the advisors are there to putting together workshops. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, um, it's Nicolette, this is Diane yeah. Mercy. I'm at Turtle Mountain with Stephanie and Shanice. I'm one, other, I'm, I'm one of the other instructors. One other thing I wanted to mention is as instructors, we try to um, talk to our students when we're advising them, uh, looking at their transcripts, you know, we'll ask them what their plans are for after they're done with their degree. And if they indicate they want to transfer out for a four year degree, we try and make sure the classes they're taking will go into the degree, degree they're seeking. And we also, during our classes, try to um, help them because you're talking about a cultural shock when you go out off the reservation. There are some things that they need to be aware of that if you're not in a class, by the time the class starts, they could get, they could get locked out. You know, uh, Here we're a little bit more lenient, but we're trying to prepare them for when they're off the reservation and in those other colleges. So we try and do as much as we can for our students. <coughs> Definitely, thank you so much for sharing that. That's really helpful information. I'm sure a lot of our students are, you know, do experience that, um, you know, that more of a personal experience when we are in tribal college. Um, I myself graduated from tribal college, so I understand that. Um, that extra support we receive um, when we are um, attending somewhere that's really close to home and you know not so far away from our families as well. So thank you both for sharing um, that perspective from a tribal college side. That's very important information to have for our students to, um, and then also our, our mainstream university uh, transfer as well. So I guess you guys basically kind of answered the, the next question. It was just really tying up, like how do you help the students tie up um, their end of things before they transfer? Was there anything else you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I did, um, she actually reminded us too about our job fair, which is really great because a lot of people from all over the state come in, even schools and colleges will come in. So, you know, the possibilities are endless here. We're not trying to, you know, say like, you know, TMCC is the best and the greatest, and we're going to do everything and make all your dreams come true. No, we want to facilitate you and encourage you and support you the whole way. Awesome. Thank you so much for um, sharing that information as well. We do have a question here from Dakota Kidder, um, and I think we'll get to that once we move into the um, mainstream side, side of things. But it could, I think we could answer some of that right now too. How involved are you, are you on the tribal college side when that student transfers, um, say their first year into a mainstream? Um, do you guys still follow them and try to offer that support while they're in the mainstream? We do keep in touch with the students, especially with the advisors. Our advisors are like our best friends, whether it just be advisors or program advisors. But we do try to stay in touch with the student to make sure the student is um, at making the right decision. You know, when you transfer to a non-tribal college, you have to really research the program. Is it a right fit? Is it something that you're willing to take on the research for? And if it's even if it's with the next year, within the next year, start researching now. You know, our articulation agreements, are they transferable? Is it transferable? Are the agreements there? Do you have the support in the program? Are you um, fully looking at the percentage rate of the employment after you finished with that degree? There's a lot of things to look at. And the, the one thing that we really try to stress is, are you fit socially? Are you fit emotionally? Are you financially prepared for everything that's gonna come towards you? 
you got to think about you're coming from a tribal college, which a classroom only has 20 com max capacity, 25 to something that's going to be two, 300, you know, students. The professor is not going to know you by first name, rather comparing to a tribal college. You get that one on one, not only with the professor or the instructor, you also get it one on one with the, the support team that we have with the student services department, as well as the advisors, you have that chance with that one on one, rather than just being a number, you're actually a name. Thank you for sharing, uh, Deanna. Uh, Stephanie, and do you guys have anything on your end from Turtle Mountain? Um, do you guys uh, still well, offer support after the student transfers or how does that work? I, again, um, like I said, it depends on the program of study. Some programs, they keep track and they still help, I think, for the first semester. Um, we do have, um, a retention specialist in our area and she she doesn't really reach out but she kind of um checks on our graduates to see how they're doing what they're doing so um otherwise that we we don't really have much communication or you know we, we do try to keep track of them and like um our retention person, she has to do the reporting for our programs to see where our students end up. So if we know of, we've had a couple that have graduated with four-year degrees, you know, so we let her know that, you know, uh, if anybody is gets employed, a lot of times they're coming back to us for uh, reference letters. So we supply those. Awesome, thank you guys for um, answering that question. Uh, we did have that question coming. I just wanted to see how on the tribal college side, what supports you guys offer. Um, and to answer your question, Dakota, um, the college fund does have a college success program. I think we have a college success coach. Her name is Emma Miller. Um, so uh, I think if we could get that put into the chat, we just put that in the chat box. If you want to reach out to her, um, we do offer some extra supports in that area if you are in a mainstream university and looking for more supports and resources. And thank you guys. Um, I guess the last question for tribal college, the college uh, representatives is um, how is COVID if um, still, you know, right now in your communities, I know it's different in everyone's communities, but how is, um, how is preparations made? Like, so for instance, a student wants to transfer um, from your college, your tribal college to a mainstream, you know, are there, you know, how's COVID affecting that process? Um, I don't think it's affecting it much. Um, like I said, our placement coordinator director, he takes students and they just abide by whatever um, rules, COVID rules there are for that school. Um, and like Shanice said, you know, it might even COVID might have made it easier for that transfer process because everything is electronic now. So, thank you, Deanna. Um, here at Navajo Tech, we just taken um, the protocols, follow all CDC guidelines. Uh, we are in person now. Uh, the first two weeks, we were all fully online. Um, the one thing that we really suggest to the students was getting the vaccines and the boosters. And we did have incentives um, for them as we were um, going along. We really tried to make sure that the only people that are here on campus are just current student, current staff, current faculty, and um, just try to stay as safe as possible as we can to continue to support them in that and we do give incentives to them so we have a couple things that we're going to be doing for the students so awesome thank you guys so much um uh, tribal colleges if we could get a thank you for them for joining us today um very well um well needed information i would say um we do like to check in and see how everything is going with them 
on a tribal college perspective as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift it over to Erin Redshirt. Uh, she is a graduate from a mainstream university. So she will be um, offering her perspective as well um, in how that uh, transfer process played out for her. So welcome, Erin. Uh, my first question for you is, uh, what plan did you set in place to prepare for transferring while you were still in a two-year college, community college? Thank you, Nicolette. Um, I received a scholarship while I was in high school. It was a very specific scholarship for Denver Public School graduates. And that scholarship uh, entrusted me with an advisor once I moved on, once I moved from high school to community college. So I had my own specific, um, she was called a DSF advisor, and she was pretty much just a scholarship program advisor. And she was separate from the other uh, community college advisors at the school. Um, so it was really nice because she was one of the most helpful advisors I had. Um, and when I first started out school, I was really on the fence about what I wanted to major in, just like I'm sure all students struggle with. Um, so she really urged me to take my core classes to start off with and any electives that might have fallen on my psych pathway that I was going on potentially. Um, when I first met her, she introduced me to what was called a transfer booklet. Um, now I went to a very unique uh, university. I went to a university that was located on a campus with three, uh, two other schools. So it was a tri-college campus, it's a Auraria campus located in downtown Denver. It's really huge. It houses so many students. It's a very diverse campus as well. Um, and it was it was really nice because they had they already had transfer agreements in place because it was was pretty much right next door. So you had your community college and then you had two universities on that campus as well. Um, so it was nice because she sat down with me. We looked at um, both of their websites and we looked for transfer booklets, which pretty much laid out credits from community colleges that the university could accept under that program. Um, so that's really what we did right away. We sat down, we looked at those booklets, we looked at my degree works pathway online and made sure that all the classes that I was signing up for were gonna benefit me in the long run and that they were what was called um, guaranteed transfer. So meaning that they're, they can transfer to any schools um, across the nation that accept guaranteed transfer credits. And that was really important to me because it, it kind of opened up a little bit of freedom with that, but um, that was probably the most helpful resource in the beginning of my transfer experience in planning was just going by those booklets from each of those schools and making sure that the classes that I was registering for were gonna end up in my program when I eventually transferred. And so that was probably the most helpful resource that I had thanks to my advisor at my mainstream university. It kind of thank you so much, Erin, for sharing that. That's a really good, great idea. Um, you know, to have a transfer booklet. I, you know, like to see how that booklet looked. If you like to share it, <laughs> um, that would be really interesting um, to see and have in place as well. Um, you kind of answered all the questions. <laughs> the next question was scholarships that were set in place um, to help transfer and then the resources that were available. Um, I guess that will jump to that one. What resources were available to assist um, specifically uh, primarily Native American students through this process? Sure. Um, the Native American presence um, on, at those two schools that I went to, the community college and the university, um, the Native American presence was very minimal. There wasn't a designated Native American Support Center at either of those schools um, that I was enrolled at. And even when I transferred to my mainstream university, um, there was a, uh, I minored in Native American Studies. So there was a Native American Studies program and it was led by one teacher, I think, who was also a lawyer. So he was definitely stretched very thin. So it was a pretty um, isolating experience, especially as a first generation student. Uh, nobody in my family, any of my direct family members or relatives had gone 
to university before. So it's very isolating, but um, I really leaned on the support of the TRIO programs that were offered at both of the institutions. Um, primarily uh, TRIO SSS, which is Student Support Services, and TRIO Educational Opportunity Center. Uh, both programs um, supported me so much throughout my journey of school. Um, they helped me with scholarship searches. So we really sat down and we looked at so many scholarships and they even helped me build out my essay, help get my references. Um, they also offered career exploration, which was really nice too um, for the students who were struggling with what to decide on majoring in. And they even assisted in the transfer process. So they kind of helped me um, once I did transfer to that university. Um, the, like, the diverse staff that the TRIO um, program had and that the student population that it served, it was, it was low income first generation students. It was probably the most helpful experience I had and the closest I felt to being safe and heard as one of the many POC and BIPOC students on that campus. So, and I'm pretty sure TRIO programs are offered um, uh, most, not most, but a lot of colleges across the nation, including TCUs. So they're really great supportive programs that I think a lot of students could benefit from. That's very helpful information, Erin. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so I guess my next question would be, what type of changes should a student prepare for when transferring um, from, their tribal college to a mainstream, just like you, you know, you pointed out, you had some really good, you had to find out what your resources were. Um, so what type of change do you think that would be for a tribal college student um, coming onto a big campus, like you pointed out? Um, I think there is a lot of change to expect when transferring. Um, the biggest that you hear is always the classroom size being very large. And I think it's because I was in um, not a very big um, program of study that my classrooms were about like 15 to 25 students. So it wasn't, it wasn't too much, but it was definitely, it was definitely a different style from the community college um, way. The teaching styles were a little bit different. The classroom styles were set up a little bit differently as well. And I really had to put in extra work to find my support system there. Um, because I feel like at community college, not that they held my hand, they were just very supportive and they were, they were easily accessible. But when I went to university, it was really about putting yourself out there and making that connection yourself. Um, in the beginning, I, I had a big disconnect because I, I didn't know anything about the school. I was working full time and I was taking night classes. So I didn't get a lot of um, exposure during the day to staff. So. Um, what really helped was really just getting outside of my bubble and looking for the other support pro programs that were at the school and getting involved in like work study. Getting a part of work study opened my eyes to um, all the other resources that were out there to help the transfer students. And it also helped me connect with other community college students who transferred as well. Um, and through that, I was able to discover um, different programs that were helping, um, I was able to figure out like what classes I should take, which teachers were good, which programs were offering free books, um, where the food drive was. It's really easy to disconnect yourself when you first transfer, but in the end, it's such a rewarding experience to engage yourself and reach out in the beginning of your transfer process and looking for that support system. Thank you so much, Erin. That is uh, very well needed information as well as, you know, everything tying together. So everything you said basically, you know, really does back up what um, our tribal colleges have also shared with us, you know, depending on your program, you know, choice that you plan to transfer to, you know, even all the way down to the mental and emotional and physical well-being of transferring and how that affects the student. So Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Okay, so now we will um, move on to Carolina. Last but not least, um, 
She is from North Dakota State University and she is in transfer and recruitment there. Um, so now we will get the opportunity to hear a mainstream university side of transfer um, for our tribal college students. So my first question for you, Carolina, is um, what are the first steps a student should take um, before considering that transfer process? Um, yeah, and that's a really great question. I think um, Deanna actually touched on this earlier in its research. I mean, you want to, um, I think sometimes we think, oh, all colleges and universities are the same. If they offer one program at one, it's going to be offered at another. And that's not the case. So looking to make sure that the institution has your programs and is, does that program fit into the delivery method you wanted. Um, because while online programs are sort of beneficial and sort of up and coming these days, not every college has those online programs that you may want. Um, another thing to look at um, is have you sort of, it's that social fit, have you visited campus? And while I know that you know, coming to a campus and visiting campus takes financial resources, it takes time, things that we may not all have, but a lot of colleges these days have virtual tours. So are you sort of getting a feel for campus that way? Um, I think always like, again, once you find your program, if you look at sort of those, those prereq classes, are those ones you can take at your current um, tribal college and um, are they going to transfer? That's a big, a big question. I think with any transfer student is, are my credits gonna transfer? And so working with myself and even advisors here on campus to just make sure you're setting yourself up on the right path. I think um, a lot of times when we talk about transfer, um, people think that universities want to take students away like before they complete their associate of arts or associate of science or get that block sort of general classes done and that's that's not the case i want you to transfer when you're ready there's no set time and so making sure that you're just keeping in touch with um you know whatever universities you're looking at um i think most universities these days online they do have like an interest form so that you can start getting added to their email list serves you can start getting invites to different um, virtual programs they may be offering and so again it's just really looking into what you want at your university you're transferring to. And I think um, listening to yourself and your needs, as well as maybe your family's needs as well, because if you're moving to a new location, is that location going to support your family? And so just really that research piece is the biggest piece. Um, I always recommend um, when you're, you know, you're ready, you're going to transfer, start doing the research. I was a transfer student who decided to transfer about two weeks before before the semester started would not recommend but you can still be successful in doing that but give yourself some time um, if you can thank you carolina for um, sharing that information too the next question is um how about resources for the your university um, what type of resources can support a student um, after they transfer yeah, great question. Um, so I always say I, even though I work in admission and recruitment, I am here for you throughout your entire period. I think sometimes it's this idea that, oh, admission is just here to recruit and then move on to the next class. And for me, one of my favorite things is seeing students grow. So when I, you know, first talk to them as a prospective student and then they come visit me on their graduation day, that's like one of the best experiences for me. So for starters, the Office of Admission is always going to be here to help support you. Um, at North Dakota State, we also have our Office of Multicultural Programs, 
Um, they support all of our student organizations. So like the Native American Student Association, they also have um, a powwow each year right before graduation. And that's actually um, with the four other institutions in our area. And so um, that's just a really great way to get involved and really celebrate um, graduation. Um, Aaron mentioned it before, a trio SSS, huge, um, they are there to support you with tutoring and other services like financial help that um, maybe in addition to financial aid or scholarships you may receive, um, as well as just sort of, I know it's when you're coming from a smaller school to a large school, it, it can be frightening to, to just ask for that help or assistance or where to go. But um, most schools are going to have a career and advising center, um, have some like center for writers. They're going to have other tutoring, particularly in, you know, maybe math or science or whatever subject you don't feel most comfortable with. And so sometimes I always say we have all these um, student support services that are included in student fees that don't get used. And so I always say you're paying for them in one way or another, like please use them because they're there for you to help make sure that you're successful. And I think that's all that we as um, academic professionals, we just want you to be successful and support you. Yes, exactly, for sure. Thank you, Carolina, for saying that um, too. Uh, I guess my next question will just kind of bounce off of that. We, um, like financially, what does the financial piece look like for a student coming from tribal college? Um, are there any scholarships um, for transfer students or how does- um, Yeah, yep, yep, great question. So we have some guaranteed transfer awards. There are some deadlines um, just like, April 1st for a fall semester start in December 1st for a spring semester start. And those are guaranteed if you meet the GPAs um, and you don't have to do anything. You just have to apply to NDSU. You, you, know, you could decide not to come to NDSU, but you would still technically receive those awards even if you weren't considering NDSU. So I think that's, that's really, um, special and we also have like a higher scholarship for students um, that can complete their associate of arts or associate of science and so we take like I mentioned we take that very seriously and we want you to finish that degree um, because it can help um, make sure you're um, successful here at NDSU. We also have um, we call it our cultural diversity tuition waiver and so um, that students can receive up to $8,000 for four years. So essentially around $32,000 in four years that goes straight to their tuition that can um, help sort of offset some of those costs. Um, additionally, through our Office of Multicultural Programs, they have a, a long list of other scholarships that they can help apply you for or help you apply for. Um, I think you just have to sort of reach out and ask, hey, do you know any scholarships? Because a lot of scholarships don't actually get applied for. They just, they get there sitting empty. And so any possible option we would have, we want to give you, we want to give you that money. So um, just, you know, I think at any school, talk with whoever you're working with, because we wanna make sure that college is um, something you can do financially. Definitely, for sure. Um, I guess this question will be for the um, tribal colleges too as well. So if a student is going to transfer, say online, say they're going to do online classes with your um, college or university, does that change that um, scholarship availability for them? Um, I know there are certain places that offer, you get, you, you'll get scholarships if you're on campus, opposed to if it's just online. Um, at NDSU, we don't differentiate between online students versus um, on-campus students. It's just that full-time um, 12 credit um, marking. Awesome. 
Thank you. At the MCC, we are the same. There's no difference for online or in person, just the part time or full time. Thank you for sharing that, Stephanie. And you have a question too in the box uh, from Alexandra De La Rosa. She is asking if she can get a link. Um, Alex, is that a, a link to the college website she's talking about or? Alexandra, if you just wanna put like your email in the chat, I'll follow up with you after this um, panel, if that works for you. Perfect. Awesome, thank you. All right, um, so thank you guys. I think that wraps up all of our questions we had. I guess the other question was the COVID question with um, university. How does that affect a transfer process for a student at the moment? Um, I think like, yes. <laughs> like previously it was said earlier, things are online now, they're virtual. Yeah. And I think that's actually really helped, particularly in the sort of the transfer realm, we're getting transcripts quicker. Students who maybe have not been able to visit campus can now um, do a virtual tour or they can meet one-on-one -on -one with an admission counselor virtually. And I think that's been, um, I think it, I think it's been pretty beneficial actually. I. It, it's hard to say that, but um, yeah, I've liked some of the changes that we've had to make because of COVID. Awesome, yes. Um, the reason why I asked last year when we had the transfer event, things were a lot different um, with how COVID was affecting our universities and our colleges. So a lot of big changes came, you know, have been made and it's so different now. Uh, thank you guys so much for um, all joining us today for our transfer webinar and um, sharing out all the great information and resources and perspectives for our students. Um, and I hope our students were able to take from that and really um, think about, you know, everything that they've heard today and when you're, you know, looking to transfer. Um, the other thing we also have too here at the College Fund, we just opened up our scholarships uh, application. Uh, so my colleague has just dropped in uh, some stuff in the chat box. Uh, we do have Juan Ruiz, who is our scholarships manager. Uh, he is offering his office hours one-on-one. -on -one, so any students or any faculty even um, who is having to, um, who is requesting extra assistance with our new scholarship application, please go ahead and give um give our our zoom link right there uh yeah we do have a zoom link now uh so today at 3 p.m mountain standard time juan will be on zoom so if you guys want to go ahead and click on that too and take part of that resource we are offering um to help students sign up for those applications for scholarships so any questions at all? We have about 10 minutes left. Um, any students having any questions, any faculty with any questions, uh, drop them in the chat box. And I don't see any questions popping up yet, but um, I'll just quickly go around and just thank each and every one of you again for joining us and sharing out all of that great information. If you guys want to, you guys can put your info too in the, the chat box for students to reach out, um, reach out to you or faculty that want to reach out to you as well. Um, does this scholarship only apply to TCU students? Are you talking about the American Indian College Fund application that just opened? the transfer program. So the transfer program on um, that, everybody that's online right now, there isn't a specific scholarship for the transfer program. Um, are, unless you're talking to um, Carolina, uh, Carolina is gonna put her information in the chat. I think she's talking about that um, transfer scholarship. I think that's what he is referring to. Um, so there is her contact info. And I will say, I'll just jump in. Ooh. 
The um, <laughs> cultural diversity tuition waiver is not just for students who are coming from a tribal college or university. It's um, any, it can be anyone who identifies as indigenous Native American. Awesome, thank you so much for that information, Carolina. I hope that answers his question. Yes, he said, thank you. <laughs> okay, so if we don't have any other questions available, please go ahead and check out our scholarship, uh, our scholarships um, Zoom. I don't think it's a webinar. I think it's an actual meeting. So you'll get one-on-one -on -one time with Juan Ruiz, who is our scholarship manager. Um, so go ahead and reach out there too, um, if you guys have any students or anybody needing extra assistance filling out that application. Uh, we have another question um, from Daniela. Does this apply to Native Hawaiians as well? Uh, Daniela, uh, does the webinar apply to Native Hawaiians or are you, I know um, Carolina is getting a lot of questions, so was that a question for Carolina or for the webinar in general? <laughs> She's typing. I got a few more minutes left, so. Um. The college fund scholarships. Daniela, if you want to hop on that Zoom link at three with Juan Ruiz, he can answer um, all that those questions for you. Uh, ben, if you want to drop that link um, in there again, I think it kind of scrolled up while everybody was asking questions. Uh, we'll drop that link in right now. Daniela, we'll drop it in the chat box again. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us again. Um, we really appreciate it here at the College Fund, we, sharing all of your knowledge about transfer for our students and our um, colleges, um, everybody who is considering um, moving on to a four-year degree. Daniela, it does apply. Um, you are welcome to apply for the Full Circle Scholarship. Thank you, Lisa, for answering that question. And thank you all again. Um, for sharing today. I uh, hope you guys all have a great rest of your week slash weekend. <laughs> I'm just letting everybody say their goodbyes in the chat box. So <laughs> it might be a little awkward silence right now, but Everybody is saying thank you and saying their goodbyes in the chat box. Um, make sure uh, you guys check out that scholarship um, meeting or click on the Zoom link um, to meet with Juan too if you need that extra assistance. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, Shanice. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, thank really you. We appreciate it. <laughs> We're happy to do it, and we hope to see some of you guys here. <laughs> Thank you, and you guys have a great day. Thank you, Deanna. Take care, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the recording and end the meeting now, so bye.